One, two, three. Our mateys from the open sea, finally a Pirates of the Caribbean Jack, film Jack. since the original, worthy of the open seas, and that exceeded my expectations. Now, of course, the past three sequels have lowered my expectations so low that it's very easy to exceed those expectations, but still, it's something. So let's talk about it. I'm done. Oh. Yeah, I'm Good call. To, I need to get my phone from over here. So Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales is the fifth film in the Pirates franchise and according to the plot synopsis as well as the trailers, the story is about a down on his luck Jack Sparrow being followed by an evil nemesis named Captain Salazar and Jack believes the only way to save himself from the evil ghost Salazar is to find Poseidon's Trident. Now that's in the movie, but that's not really what the movie's about. Now what I'm about to say isn't really a spoiler, but if you don't want to know anything, skip over the next 20 seconds of this. The actual plot of the movie is about Will Turner's son, who is now like 19 years old and is attempting to break the curse of the seas and free his father of all of these curses. And he's seeking Poseidon's Trident. That's the actual plot of it. And there's also a girl who's not really the love interest, but kind of the love interest in it, who's also seeking Poseidon's Trident for her own reasons, and all these stories kind of converge, but the two leads are actually Will Turner's son and this girl. That's the plot of the movie, and Jack's kind of coincidental to it, uh, more so than a critical part to the story. With all that said, this is pretty easily the best movie in the franchise since the original, but since the bar has been set pretty low in the sequels in the Pirates franchise, that's not saying a whole lot. So with that said, let's just talk about the good. Right off the bat, that this movie really benefits from being focused and very clear in what the movie is about. Everyone is trying to get Poseidon's Triton because it does something to help them accomplish their goals in life. So it gives every character in the movie a clear motive, a clear direction, and we know what everyone is trying to do throughout the entire movie which helps the movie be focused. One of the problems with especially Pirates 2 and 3 is there are so many plots and so many directions and so many motivations that it was hard to follow the story a lot of the time because it was so convoluted. Here it's very clear as to what people are doing and why they're doing it. And that just helps you enjoy this world again. Because the first film was so fun and so fresh and such an, like a great adventure that I think is going to be pretty timeless for decades that people like me are going to be showing to their kids and their kids are going to love it. It's that type of movie and this movie kind of returns to it. It's not the greatness of the original but some of the goodness of it because we can just have a fun adventure with these characters. Along the way we have a number of fun new characters. None of them are great new characters but much will be a common theme in this review, they're good new characters. So we have Will Turner's son, who's not particularly captivating, but Will Turner was never particularly captivating, but he fills this role of the young adventurer out to do the right thing and willing to step into harm's way to do it. Then we have our new lead girl character, uh, Karina, who um, provides a new kind of dynamic to it in that she's very intellectual. She's into astronomy and looking at the stars, reading book, and she's a realist. She doesn't believe in ghosts, in which case that creates a nice, interesting dynamic in the stories. Now, I don't want to go too much into the negative. The story early on plays a little bit too heavily into the, you're a girl? You can't do that. You're a girl trying to do that? You must be a witch. It plays too much into that silliness, but overall, she's a pretty enjoyable character. I don't know who the actress is, but she did a very good job in it. And in particular, as the story goes along, the movie becomes kind of more her story, especially like you go into the third act, and it becomes almost her movie in the third act. It works quite well. Along those same lines, the movie has, it works on a lot of levels I wasn't expecting it to work. I was expecting to have more fun than the previous sequels, and it was. I expected a little bit more of the lighthearted humor, and it had that, but also had some kind of, you know, hit you on the heart feely type moments that I wasn't expecting and in ways I wasn't expecting and some of that's because the movie was marketed very weird. As I mentioned earlier in the synopsis section of this review, the trailers and stuff made it seem like this is a Jack story or people trying to track down Jack and it, it's just not. He, he seemed, he's very just he's just kind of there throughout the story. Early on, he sets some things in motion, but he's just kind of there, and you realize that it's about these two young adults on an adventure, and very much 
kind of the way that Elizabeth and William were in the original movie. And in that, it works pretty nicely. Some of the set pieces are actually pretty cool and memorable. And like the final sequence involving kind of a split ocean kind of look was a very cool vibe to it and look to it. The movie actually does a lot of really good stuff with Barbosa as well. Early on, I was thinking, do we really need to bring everybody back? But as the story unfolds, I was thinking, you maybe could have just left Jack out of the story and just focused on Barbosa because in both cases, we're kind of looking at aging pirates and what that looks like, and that was handled a little bit better with Barbosa than it was with Jack, which Jack was just kind of awkward. Anyway, I'm getting into the negatives a little bit too soon. And on one final positive, this movie returns to a sense of heroism that was lacking from the first two pirate sequels in particular, but you know who you're rooting for, you know why you're rooting for them, and at the end of the movie, you can feel a sense of payoff as our heroes accomplish something good that we believe in. With all that said, this is only a good movie. Movie. It's not a great movie, so let's talk about the bad. And right off the bat, the thing that kind of makes this movie not work as good as, say, the original is the script and the director don't seem to know how to balance all of these stories as well as they want to. And so you've got all these characters all heading in the same direction, so it's focused in that sense. But at the same time, you keep thinking, like, did we need this plot line in it? And long chunks of time will go where you forget to focus in on, like, Will Turner's son. You forget about Henry Turner and all of his mission to save his dad, and then we come back to it because we're focusing on all these other plots. And so it feels very much like it shifts significantly between which story we're focusing on, as well as the way it's edited together, it feels like they had a movie that was longer, but they wanted to trim it down, so they cut off like the beginning of scenes just to make it move quicker, which makes for a sense to when you switch to a new scene, it's a little bit jarring because you're just kind of there and it just kind of happens. And that's the way the whole story of it kind of unfolds. Even as you get into like the third act, there's some like pretty heartfelt moments in the middle of it and you're starting to develop the characters and understand where they're coming from. And then it's just like suddenly, immediately we shift into the third act with like battleships and it just gets keeps going until the very end of the movie. And it's just very jarring in the way it's cut together and the story is told. And while the story story on paper is pretty focused. In a synopsis, it all makes sense. The way it comes together is really choppy. And kind of with that, there's plot elements that are brought up in the first half, like about witches or brought up a lot in the first half of the movie. Nowhere to be found in the second half. None of the language, none of that's paid off. It's just stuff set up in the first act that just kind of gets abandoned. There's a bunch of setup with some British guys that you don't like, kind of like in the first one, except even more kind of dickish than the original one. And it, it, it has a conclusion to it, but very unsatisfactory, just kind of like a period kind of into the sentence without playing out what you thought was going to have more of a payoff to it. And so it, it feels like it kind of disjointed while on paper, in theory, being pretty focused. And to that point, I think that's why Jack feels so unnecessary in the story because all these other storylines work quite a bit better than his. They make more sense. When it starts doing like flashbacks and stuff, telling about Jack's background and how his connection to Salazar and how all that works together, it's it's some of the least interesting and most groan-worthy stuff in the movie where they're answering questions you've never asked about Jack's history and where certain things came from. And the, it feels like they almost did that because they needed to have a purpose for Jack to be in the movie when a quick, easy weekend rewrite and Jack's out of the movie and you've got a tighter movie that's more focused, that gives you more time to really dig into the stories that you wanted to focus in on. But to some of the points I made before about how really the leads of this are the two young stars, the movie didn't seem to know which one of them was the star and which one it wanted to focus on because the first act focuses heavily on Henry Wilson and the third act focuses heavily on her and the middle act's kind of about everybody. And all that goes to, once again, this miss smash storytelling and it feels like they couldn't quite get it together. They needed a little bit more prep time to tighten up that script and then perhaps a different director that knows how to really bring it all together better than this one was able to in 
once again, I think that also goes to why the marketing was so weird and made it all about Jack and Salazar hunting him down when the movie's really about the hunt for Poseidon's trident and people's stories of redemption and things like that. With all that said, it's a fun movie that you could see how it could have been a great movie, but it's only really a good movie. With all that said, I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. It is a good fun time at the movies, but if you're feeling already burned on this franchise, it's going to feel like too little, too late. It's not good enough to redeem the franchise, but it is a fun movie in its own right. And if I'm being honest, if you're a big fan of the franchise, you do want to go see this movie in the theater. For most everyone else, you can probably wait until Redbox. And it would be a very fun movie night with Redbox. Decent time at the theater. And if you're burned out on the franchise, probably just go ahead and skip it. How about you? What did you think about it? Tell me in the comments section down below. Let's have a lively discussion about this one. We all have strong opinions about these movies because most of us loved the first one, had all kinds of mixed emotions about the other ones. Let's get it going down in the comment section down below. And if you're new to this channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, trailer reactions, TV reviews. I got this thing called Masters of Movie Trivia. The latest one dropped actually the day that this video was recorded Wait. where I compete for to be the best. It was like this. The the movie movie. It goes like this. <laughs> if you push it, it goes like this. Oh man, I don't know what that means, but oh man. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please consider clicking that subscribe button and I will see you next time and maybe he will too. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.